Hey y'all, it's James. James's boat build. So I got the, um, the camera set up on a tripod so I can um, show you how I wet out the, um, the fiberglass. A um, couple of tricks before I do that, uh, I want to let you know. Um, number one, um, this, this is a special uh, hex type of um, fiber. Um, it's it's woven this way and that way and it's designed to drape over complex curves not that this is so much a con a complex curve it's not that bad uh, but um, it has its uh, places such as uh, this right here you know it, it's if you used um, what I'm like I'm gonna use on the sides the uh, biaxial stuff is just, you, you know, it, it, it likes to lay down lengthwise and pretty much that fit flat. Um, this obviously is has curves, and so this is why I chose this type. This is 8 ounce, 8.8 uh, 8 ounces. Um, I uh, put a link down where I purchased it, and um, I'll do so. Um, so, uh, to the boats and, um, you know, doing fiberglass and, um, and I've learned a lot and I want to share with you. Number one is do not buy your fiberglass and have it shipped folded. Don't do it. Don't do it. I don't want to pay for the postage. You'll call Don't do it. Don't buy your fiberglass folded. It's just wreaks havoc. Um, you're going to have to iron it out and get all the creases out of it, buy it rolled, save yourself a ton of trouble. It's just worth it. Trust me. Um, here's another. What I'm going to do, and it's it's held in place right now just by sitting there. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is go over the top and, um, and wet that down first. So I'll have a basis of you know, when I start rolling and squeegeeing it, it it's not going to slide off in any way, shape, or form. And um, there's another thing too. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to—I should—I'm getting ahead of myself. And then, so I'm going to wet out the the seam at the top first, probably about eight inches or so, uh, from front to back. And then I'm going to start from the back and uh, work my way this way. And uh, wet it out. Just basically spread out the uh, epoxy, um, and that's how I'm going to wet out the uh, this fabric. Um, when I when I do make my cuts, um, I uh, tape off the ends because they're just going to fray if you don't. And you know you might think, oh, that's a lot of work, and it, it won't fray that much. Trust me, it does, and it's just a lot easier to tape it up when you've made your cut. Um, I'm going to show you too this. Um, it's a little electric. Uh, uh, what do you call it? electric scissors? Man, I mean it just zips right through the uh, the fiberglass like nobody's business. No pulling. No, it, unless you cut it uh, with a. I'm telling you, this little guy right here. It's Amazon twenty bucks. It, it's the bomb. It just saves you a bunch of grief. And these are the little tips that I've I've learned from doing all this. Um, we're gonna put it on pause, and we're gonna come back to uh, mixing. Um, for me, in in my uh, mixing in this heat that I'm in, it's about 80 degrees right now, and uh, I'm using the extra uh, slow um, hardener along with the uh, the resin, and um, I can do 20 pumps and um, it gives me a good amount and uh, I've been working with that it doesn't overheat the pot life um, when you when it talks about pot life it talks about when you're mixing and how long you can leave it condensed in this pot you know the amount of resin because uh, with it being a bulk amount and heating up or and just being sitting there it, it's it's gonna cure and kick off and draw a lot of heat quickly um, but the extra slow in this heat 
Well, I probably got 10 minutes to get it out of the pot and um, and spread it out. Now, once you got it spread it out, I mean, now you got hours because it's at a thin layer. It's not all bulked together and and uh, having a chemical reaction. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and make up this um, this pot. I always do one, and then one, two, and then two. Okay, so there I got the amount of uh, hardener and resin that I want to use on this uh, layup. So I um, I like to uh, use my mixer, my epoxy mixer. And I do watch the time. So, I mix it up and, um, and I use the, um, I use this drill and the mixer because this is my first layer of fiberglass. Um, this adds a lot of bubbles, air bubbles, to the mix, but it mixes it obviously extremely well. Um, when I do my last and uh, final um, application of epoxy, it's going to be hand stirred, and um, it has to be. I don't want no air bubbles. Right now, um, I don't know if you've noticed on the uh, the other side or from the other videos, there were little air bubbles, and that's okay because I sanded them out and they're gone and it's flat but it left like little craters perfect for the next top layer of fiberglass as far as I'm concerned I I think it gives it more something to hold on to and um, you know and it's not like they're gigantic air bubbles and craters but you know if this was not going to be primed and painted I certainly want, wouldn't want those air bubbles to be in my epoxy showing the wood, you know what I mean? So, we got it all mixed up. And that's good. So now, I use my trusty roller, the resin roller and um, in my spreader you can see that um, it's very thin it's a very thin roller it's a resin roller and um, what is it it's a uh, West Systems 800 7 inch rollers which I cut in half because I like using a small roller so now I'm going to get my butt up on top of the boat and do the seam, the, the, the keelson. And unfortunately, I don't know how to set that up, and i got to work quickly with this. So we're just going to put it on pause. All right, guys. Let's set the camera back up. I made another pot of uh, epoxy, and I wanted to give you a visual of how I wet this out. Just pour it all up on there and more or less let it soak in there, drip all the way down. It's not, uh, it's kind of like really heavy painting, um, not that I would paint like this, but the whole objective is to soak out this um, fiberglass and uh, you want to do it deliberately and uh, let the epoxy set up and uh, then put another coat on. Um, I don't know how well you can see. I guess you can't see it all. Move that camera and, uh, and just roll her out. I mean, there's going to be air bubbles that come up, but you could just mush them down. And uh, the resin 
will seep right through and go to the wood. Now, if I didn't set up and use that uh, first uh, layer, uh, whereas uh, I didn't make a basis, um, you, you would what would happen is the resin would uh, soak into the, the fabric and then into the wood, and the wood would draw out a lot of the resin. It, uh, it it's so much so whereas you have dry spots and you don't want dry spots so keep that in mind you do not want dry spots you don't want air bubbles and if you do you'll end up coming back and sanding them out and uh, it just ends up being more work because you didn't spread it properly so I'm using very light pressure I want to spread this epoxy as evenly as possible. I don't want to try to move the cloth, but I don't want to force it either. I mean, I don't want to, uh, if it's going to go some way, kind of let it go. It'll fall in place. Normally I spread it with uh, that spreader, but I, I left it over there and, you know, I'm not used to having the camera and recording this. I, this is a first for me, um, but I, I felt like it was, it was uh, necessary to give a visual aid on how this is done. And uh, I'm just kind of pushing, I got a lot of air bubbles here. Kind of just pushing these air bubbles down. And they go down. You know, they, they always do. They figure out where they, where they want to, the fabric wants to go. And um, it just goes. This uh, whole process for this side of the boat will end up, it'll, uh, it'll take me a good hour to get it all done. You know, you kind of puddle it up, move it around, let it settle in, and um, it just, it comes out great. It's just, I don't think it's that hard. With a little practice, anybody can do it. And trust me, I hate painting. So that's about it guys. I gotta make up another pot and continue on. 
and uh, I'll show you the results in the next video. All right, guys, that's it. I got to work, and um, I can't worry about the camera. Hopefully, that was a good representation of how I do it. I got to continue on, and I'll show you my results in the next video. Be good. All right, guys, I finished wetting it out. Uh, this was the first coat, and uh, I wanted to show you what an air bubble looks like. It's not that big of a deal. And it's stuff you will have to um, deal with. You could probably already see it. There's a big old air bubble right there. And uh, what we do is we take our roller. And this is why you have the resin roller. This is exactly why. You want to, I mean, I rolled it out with the, uh, you know, what do you call it? the resin roller the the fiber one the short one i had and now and that's all we're going to do just kind of move it back and forth and it sticks down the air comes back out i mean you don't want to start a crease in there but you definitely want to get it pat down And it's going to take some time. I mean, you know, this one has me a little worried, but uh, I could see it's coming out. And what would happen is if you didn't get it out and you missed an air bubble, you'd, when you're sanding, you'd end up, um, you'd end up just cutting the, through the fiberglass and then filling it. It's as simple as that, but... You want to avoid all that and keep it, um, keep it, uh, you know, as bubble free as possible. I'm going to send these bubbles down. Yep, there you go. And it's gone. Just like that with the little uh, metal resin, resin roller. Now I'm going to go through the whole thing line by line. I just finished, so it's still a little wet. But it should be just dry enough down that way. By the time I get here, I'll be caught up with it. This excess, you only want to cut. Um, now, I'm going to cut this out with the number 11 X-Acto knife. But you only want to cut out where the resin is. Okay? Don't cut out the dry. Because what's going to happen is it's all going to fray. And it's just a mess. And um, I'll end up saving that piece just like I saved this other piece here because it's the oh shit factor you know if something happens and i need an extra piece you know that's my go-to piece so no sense of throwing it away that's that's a nice extra piece so and i'm not going to have to cut anything on the uh the top because that looks pretty even that's a nice overlap coverage and don't forget we still have another layer on this side and another layer on that side. Now be the top final coat. That's it. Um, Y'all be good.